Hey, what's up everybody? Today, uh, we are talking about the Canon 1DX Mark III, and I'm recording this video for the second time. <laughs> so if my voice goes out, I'm really sorry. Evidently, I don't know how to work uh, this external recorder I just picked up and uh, didn't record any audio because I'm a dummy. For those that don't know, I am a professional photographer full-time. I work for major news organizations, advertising clients, uh, entertainment, uh, hospital ads, all kinds of crazy stuff doing photo and video. Today I'm going to talk about the photo side of things. Um, if you're looking for more of the video features, um, I just don't have as much experience with this camera yet because I haven't done a lot of that work in the last few months um, with the Canon 1DX Mark III. I did a little job for the Wall Street Journal where I used the video features on this camera, um, but it was so quick, so kind of run and gun. I don't know if I have a lot of insight for people when it comes to the camera's video features. So today, we're gonna to talk about the Canon 1DX Mark III and how it performs as a still photography camera um, from the eyes of a professional photojournalist and photographer uh, working with it for the last six months. So for those of you who watched the unboxing video, I am sorry it's taken so long to do a review on this camera, but to be honest, I haven't done uh, enough work with it in the first little month or so because COVID started, and therefore I kind of had to wait a little bit, and then just, you know, life gets in the way of things, and COVID's been a mess for everybody, and certainly for me, as far as work goes, so I've been focusing a lot more energy on that work side of things. Um, but today I really wanted to talk about this camera and how I felt about it after six months of ownership. So I did get this camera right when it came out. Uh, the One DX Mark III was shipped to me the day they came out. I ordered two of them, one from Midwest Photo Exchange, uh, which is kind of my camera store of choice now. Again, not sponsored. And the other one came from B&H Photo. Uh, both of these cameras came with the 64 gigabyte CF Express card and the card reader. And other than that, I didn't get any extra accessories for this. Um, I just kind of used the same batteries from my old 1DX Mark IIs that I sold. I had an extra one or two there. And I had the new batteries, new charger, all of that stuff. Which actually brings me to my first point. One of my favorite things about this camera is the fact that all of my old accessories work. I really like that Canon has kept the same battery styles on these cameras. Um, whether it be the 5D Mark III, the 5D Mark IV, uh, which also shared batteries with the 60D, the 80D, 90D, uh, R5 can even use those batteries. And now with the 1DX, I've been able to use the same batteries from my 1DX Mark II to my 1DX Mark III. That might seem like a really small deal, but as a professional photographer who kind of builds up some extra batteries, it's nice to be able to keep that stock and keep that value as I move from camera to camera. Um, that's not true of some of the other cameras from Canon, uh, like the cinema cameras kind of seem to pop around just a little bit. And then also like with other brands, sometimes they switch things up too. And Canon's done it in the past as well. So I've been really appreciative of the fact that I can kind of keep using those same accessories. And with the 1DX Mark III, I can use the same charger, same batteries, um, that's fantastic. Now one thing that is not the same though is the memory cards. Uh, the 1DX Mark III uses CF Express Type B memory cards. These are awesome. I really, really like these little cards. They kind of feel like an SD card went to the gym. <laughs> and they're really tough, really rugged, um, a nice small size. And I really like the way these things feel. I like the read and write speeds are absolutely incredible. Um, it comes with an included SanDisk card reader. Uh, as a brief aside, I think it's way too big. <laughs> Other than that, it works great. And I like that it's USB-C, of course. We're in 2020, that's what everything should be at this point. Um, but I really love these cards. I love how fast they read and write. I know some people kind of prefer it to be like an SD plus CF Express Type B combo. Uh, personally, I like just going to the new card system. If we're gonna have new cards, let's just move everything over, buy the new cards and move on. Um, I hate going back and forth between old and new. Again, that's my personal preference. I know some people are kind of on either side of the fence on that. Um, but since Canon's whole ecosystem is going that way, I really, really like it. You know, this camera, the R5, which I have got as well, and then like the C500 Mark II, the C300 Mark III, uh, I'm sure whatever the next something will all be CFX, CF Express Type B, and I'm really excited to just kind of just move over to it if that's where we're gonna go. Uh, and, and again, the cards are really great. Uh, the read and write speeds are fantastic, uh, but most importantly, that comes when I'm downloading photos. Uh, they just download super quick. It's actually pretty noticeably quicker than old cameras. Um, as an aside, I'm probably gonna stick with SanDisk cards. I actually bought some cards from a third party manufacturer that's 
owned by former owners of another card company, and I had them fail, which was pretty disappointing. Um, so I have no, I had no issues with the SanDisk card, but with another brand of card, I did have an issue, and I'm not going to call them out because they did replace them, and that was pretty nice of them. Um, but I'll just say that the SanDisk cards have been fantastic, and I would suggest sticking with them based on my personal experience. And again, no, no money in the game, no skin in the game there, but uh, the SanDisk card has performed perfectly for six months and on all my assignments, no matter what I've thrown at it. So I think the number one thing would be why stick with Canon and why the 1DX Mark III? Like the 1DX Mark II was pretty great. Um, this camera's better, of course, but like, do you really need what's new on this camera? Uh, for me, I personally just upgrade when new ones come out. So with the 5Ds that I had before, when the 5D4s came out, I just hopped right to the 5D4s and the 1D cameras, I've actually owned these since the 1D Mark IV. That was the point where I switched from Nikon to Canon. It was the 1D Mark IV, 5D Mark II or III range. I can't remember what 5D was out. Um, so I've owned a 1D since the 1D Mark IV series of camera, and they are just so well built. They are just very durable, extremely tough cameras. Um, I cover news, I cover sports, I cover entertainment. So I've covered the NFL since 2013. And, uh, you know, when you're outside and in those games, you know, whether it be raining at the Eagles or snowing at the Bills or whatever in between, it was like 110 degrees at a Titans game last year. That was when the canister blew up and, you know, uh, it, anyways, the point being these cameras just always work. And that is one of the biggest selling points of the Canon 1DX Mark III or 1DX series cameras. Um, and that is something that I hope never goes away. Uh, I know these are EF mount cameras and we got the RF on the horizon and stuff like that, but the build quality of these cameras is second to none. And that is the main reason why I own a camera like this. In addition to the speed and everything else that goes along with a professional sports and journalism camera, um, but the build quality is just, uh, I feel like you could build a porch with this thing, just using it like a hammer and I'd be all about it. That's that's like a big thing for me is the build quality and durability. Canon Professional Services gets these things repaired super quick, about 48 hours, 72 hours turnaround, which is awesome, uh, but I don't wanna send them in for repairs if I don't have to, and I think with the way I use cameras, covering natural disasters, football, uh, concerts with beer and all kinds of nastiness around and everything, uh, these just work every single day. So from a journalism standpoint, that's why I'm on the 1DX series camera. So as far as features goes, there's three big features that I really like about this camera. Uh, number one is the new or updated autofocus system. First off, it's better than the 1DX Mark II, I find in general. Uh, I find it to be just a little bit better. And that's kind of a thing every time these cameras come out, the next one's just a little bit better, a little bit better. Uh, but the big thing is with the 1DX Mark III, and I don't know how I'll show you this on video, but there is a mode that's like a person tracking mode through the viewfinder. So instead of using like the live view and all that stuff, which is another great thing I'll talk about, um, right through the viewfinder, you can set up a mode where it tries to find faces and tracks those faces uh, while you're photographing through the viewfinder. That might be one of the biggest features for me. Um, I got this camera on like whatever it was, like Valentine's Day or something like that. And the next day, the same day I got it, I went out and shot an assignment, but the next day I shot professional boxing. Uh, and those photographs, it was so nice to be able to lock onto a face and track the face um, instead of just kind of put, putting a box on the face, which is what I've always done in the past. Uh, I cover UFC and a little bit of boxing. Um, and along with a bunch of other sports, but for that boxing match, man, it was great to just be like, oh, here's a face. And um, a guy in England who shoots for Getty, he had been testing the camera and he was talking all about how great that was too. So I was really excited. That was the first thing I got to shoot with this. But I will say that first day I was like sold. Like this was a big feature for me. Um, and, and the ability to do it not with going to live through, live view was like really, really nice. I set up my cameras with back button autofocus. So what I do is I set up the AF on button as my traditional kind of box type focus point. And then I set up an HP point or a registered point on the star button. And I have that set up to do the kind of face tracking mode. So it's kind of nice to have both of those and you can switch between them really, really quick. Probably the next biggest thing and the most revolutionary thing for me is that AF on button. Um, all of us in the journalism world switch our autofocus button from the front shutter button to the back autofocus button. That's something I've done since college and it's just faster, better, and I could probably do a whole video just on that feature and it's I change it on every camera. But with this camera, 
What's amazing is the AF on button is now touch sensitive. It has a little infrared sensor on the top one and the vertical one. And so you just move your thumb across that button and then jam it in and it starts focusing wherever you drop that point. This is one of those things I think most gear reviewers probably don't understand how big of a deal it is. But as a professional photographer who's always chasing to put that point in the right spot at the right time before someone might even be there, and that's the big thing that I don't like about all these AI type autofocusing systems, is they assume, well, that's the thing you want, let's go over here. While me, I know I need it here or there, and I need it there right now because that person's gonna come into the frame there, whatever. This dial, whatever you want to call it, the infrared touch thing is just a game changer. That, that was so amazing to me to be able to just move that point virtually instantaneously at all times without even giving a second thought. It was super weird to get used to, I'll be honest about that. The first time I used it, I was like, uh, and I'd shoot it around the thing so fast, or I had it set up where I hit a button and then do it. But after about half that first boxing match, I had it down pretty tight, which was uh, pretty cool. And again, that's just a game changer for me. It was super nice, super easy to use. And I was really excited to have that finally uh, a very fast way to move my AF point uh, without even thinking. It's just, it's just second nature pretty much instantaneously. The other big thing is that this camera is basically like the best 1DX plus a mirrorless camera built in together. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with this camera. Now, of course, that only works through the rear LCD screen because um, it doesn't have an electronic viewfinder, uh, which I find is a good thing. I prefer an optical viewfinder, especially for fast moving things like sports or journalism where I'm just trying to get that exact moment and I gotta be able to see it. It's nice to be able to switch in that live view and have that face tracking and all those intelligent modes that the other mirrorless cameras have built right in. I do find myself using that feature a lot, which I can't say about the old cameras. I'd use it once in a while, but the 1DX Mark III, and maybe it's because I gotta wear fancy masks and stuff every time I shoot now, and I'm kind of distracted by those, but regardless, I'm using that live view a lot more, and I find it really impressive. Um, and I, I'm kind of making pictures in a way that I didn't before. Uh, I. I you know, that has its limitations too. I'm not always on, you know, using the LCD screen. But I've definitely found that this camera is so competent in that live view mode. They've taken all these good things from the EOS R and the M series and all this stuff and they've put them in this professional camera that at least I can go into that mode when I need to. Uh, I still mostly shoot obviously through the optical viewfinder. That's the way the camera's built and designed to be made and, and used. And, I, and that's obviously the way I'm gonna record photographs most of the time. But it's nice to just have basically a little mirrorless camera built into your professional camera uh, for those times when you gotta do something confusing or a Hail Mary or whatever uh, that we all call them. Uh, you know, when you gotta do that thing, it's nice to have it be so feature filled and feature rich. As far as the files go, they look great. Uh, ISO 10,000, 12,000. It's about the highest I actually need to use. Uh, for sports, I'm generally in the 2,000 to 8,000 range, and that's where most people are buying this camera for. And the files are great. They're better than the 1DX Mark II. Um, are they earth shattering? You know, uh, maybe not, but I remember the first thing I shot, again, was that boxing, and I used it like 10,000 or 12,000 that night, and they were nice. They were really nice files. They were really, really sharp. They just, it, it, was, it wasn't just necessarily like the noise was better, it was just everything was better, you know? And that's what I want. That's that's my biggest thing I want out of a new sports camera is it's like, I don't I don't need ISO 70,000. I need ISO 4,000 to 10,000 to look better. And that's what every sports camera, that's all I want. It's just like, get that sweet spot to be even better and that's all I really want. I, I don't use a camera at 20,000 or 50,000 ISO. Like, wh what are you doing if you're up there? Um, with good lenses, professional lenses and stuff, you should be kind of, again, in that like, I mean, of course you go down to 100 for like an outdoor game or something, but generally I kind of fall in that 2,000 to 8,000 range when I'm shooting professional sports, uh, which is kind of where I test the ISO more. Um, I've been using this camera for months now. I've been using it on all kinds of different shoots. Uh, I covered tornadoes with it. I've done portraits for newspapers with it. Uh, I've done, you know, sporting events before they canceled. Uh, and we'll be doing more sports again soon. Um, and it's just like, it just takes anything you throw at it and gives you a great file. Like that's what it's there for. I do have a few minor complaints. Uh, they're kind of the same complaints I had about the 1DX Mark II. And that is, I wish they would update the firmware more regularly to add little features. Canon has heard this from me about 27 times in emails, but I'll say it again. 
Uh, I use separate files for RAW and JPEG to different cards, and I, for the life of me, want my voice tags and my star ratings or locks and all that stuff to go to both those cards separately. They never do it, but again, little things like that that are still there. Ugh, I just want you to fix those stupid little things. And that's, uh, that's, that's one of those, there's little things like that that are kind of little gotchas, uh, and they're very small complaints. Other than that, I mean, you're really getting a top-notch camera here that is incredible. Uh, the only con of this camera really is the cost. It's $6,500 or something like that. That is not cheap. That is not a cheap camera. And we don't make a lot of money doing journalism and news and sports and all that stuff. Uh, I, I make probably less money from sports than I do from other stuff. So it's a hard sell to buy a camera that's this expensive. Who I think this camera is for, though, is the people that are doing those things the majority of the time. Uh, mainly sports. If you're doing sports most of the time, if you work at a professional sports team, if you are doing sports for a college or you're a sports journalist, I mean, this camera is going to be everything you want it to be. It's just absolutely amazing. Beautiful files, beautiful high ISO. The object or person tracking is just absolutely amazing. And that new autofocus on button with the infrared is just, it, it just, it makes the actual time you're taking pictures better and it allows you to make pictures that you couldn't have made before or make those pictures better and i think that's what i want out of a new camera that's like the most important thing i don't want to sit down with the spec sheet and see blah 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 is two percent better than blah 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 like with a camera like the 1dx mark iii it is designed for professionals who are going to go out there and they are going to work every day to make amazing pictures day in and day out now, does that mean that you need a camera of this level to make those pictures Definitely not. There's a ton of amazing cameras from Canon and other brands that will do an amazing job most of the time. The 1DX Mark III is a camera that's gonna deliver every single time. It is the F450 super duty of cameras. You know what I mean? It's the gnarly pickup truck that can do 100 miles an hour and then jump a river and land on the other side and tow the tractor home or whatever. You know what I mean? That's what this camera is for. It is, it is the dump truck of cameras and I love it for it. Um, and I guess that's who I'd recommend this camera for. I know that there's a lot of video shooters out there and social media people that just want that big bad camera, and that's awesome. If you're a hobbyist or a, you know wildlife photographer, stuff like that, like man, you are not going to be disappointed by this camera. This camera is absolutely amazing. Uh, but I think the people who are really going to push it to the level that it's going to really stand out above what a 1DX Mark II or whatever the previous generation cameras is going to do is going to be those full time hardcore sports and news and um, you know event photographers who are really just pushing the gear every single day those are the people this camera is for um, now the elephant in the room is the r5 which i have over there and that camera in ways a lot of people have been asking me like would you have bought the r5 or would you have bought the 1dx mark iii if you had the r5 personally yes i think they both fill very different roles for me um, the 1DX Mark III's are really, really fast cameras. I cover the NFL, I cover natural disasters, I cover COVID, I covered protests for the George Floyd uh, killing. I mean, I've taken this camera in extreme environments. That camera has been in rain, it has been in a tornado, it has been in tear gas, it has been in pepper spray, it has been in, you know, testing sites for COVID. It has done everything and it works perfectly. And that's why I buy the 1DX Mark III. Now, that being said, I also bought the R5 because I do advertising work and I do hospital ads and I do portraits for brands that are going to blow them up really, really big. And I, I also do work that's more subtle and quiet and you need to have that more sensitive camera that's a little more, a little more, um, a little more subtle, I guess, you know, like the R5. And the R5 is going to fill that role for me. Now, that being said, there's a ton of you watching this right now. And by ton, I mean like 27 people. And all 27 of you, probably a bunch of you don't do sports full time or at a level that I do sports or other people do sports. But sometimes you might do sports. And the R5 is a great fit for you, I think, personally. I have friends who are testing them in the NFL camps right now, and they are just loving this camera that I've seen. I haven't shot sports with it yet. I am desperately waiting for my next sports assignment to take it out. Um, but I think the R5 is kind of finally like an in-between perfect journalism camera. Like most newspapers and newspaper photographers probably would be really stoked to have the R5. You still have 12 frames per second mechanical. 
you still have super high resolution, which is nice. You can kind of crop in. Uh, you know, maybe you take the 300 instead of having to take the 400 millimeters, stuff like that. Um, the R5 is amazing. The files are incredible. The autofocus is amazing. Um, but for me, they're like, if I didn't do the sports, I, I could easily see buying a couple of those R5s instead. But for me, doing those sports, doing those concerts when it's 100 degrees out, doing those tornadoes, doing all that stuff where I just know those cameras are going to get whipped around. That's why I still want that 1D. I still want that Nikon D6, whatever. Like I want a camera like that and I probably will for a lot of years longer. Now do I think there might be a 1DXR or something five years from now, three years from now? Well sure, and then I might speak differently. But as of right now, I still prefer that optical viewfinder for all those clutch moments. I'm always gonna grab the 1Ds when it really counts. At least personally, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, they're just, they're just, you know, depends on your need. So uh, for most people though, man, the R5 is sick <laughs> and a lot cheaper. So you could buy maybe one of those RF 24 to 70s or the 51 II that's absolutely amazing, um, which would be really, really sick. That Those lenses are amazing. The RF lenses are amazing. So anyways, do you have any other questions about the 1DX Mark III? Please drop them down below in the comments. As always, follow me on Instagram. Um, and of course, this video was not sponsored. No one paid me to say anything. I bought all this stuff with my own money. And uh, you know, if, if, if you wanna say thanks, leave a thumbs up below or go like a picture on my Instagram. Uh, just posted some cool stuff from the R5, actually my first uh, New York Times assignment with it. And uh, man, those files are great. Uh, but there's a ton of 1DX Mark III stuff over on my Instagram too, if you wanna check it out, including some front page photos. So always cool to get that love. Uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.